This is the Balkan Adventures podcast, everyday life and experiences in the Western Balkans. Hello and welcome to another edition of the podcast with me, David Bailey. It's getting hotter, it seems, here in northwest Bosnia and Herzegovina, getting, though, to the normal weather that we've been used to for so many years. Having said that, I still really, really struggle with anything over 32 Celsius. In this episode, I talk to Elizabeth O'Neill from Perth in Western Australia, who, with her husband, is currently in Croatia on a work away. Now, as you might know, I'm extremely interested in all forms of slow tourism, and this actually seems to fit, although counterintuitively. I mean, working whilst holidaying? So on a rather buffery Skype connection recently, I asked Elizabeth about working away. Uh, my husband and I are, are young retirees, and... We had been invited to a wedding in Vietnam of a friend of mine. I worked there a couple of years ago. And a friend here in Croatia who was born here and was returning for his 60th birthday. And we thought, how can we do this together and be away for six months? So uh, we started in Vietnam, looked for a connecting flight to start either north or south and end up in Croatia through July. We had also been looking at the Workaway site for the last two or three years, an internet platform where you work for 20 hours in exchange for your accommodation and food and you give a hand to people who need helping up their farm or maintaining old buildings, cooking, cleaning. Um, A lot of hostels are using Workaways at the moment, but we've avoided hostels and look for a more cultural kind of change. We wanted this kind of holiday because we uh, we're quite um, active. My husband is has a building trade, and I have a teaching background, and so we want the skills that we have are willing to share, and we look at other people that are on this site in the areas that we're travelling, and. We ask them or, as it turns out, they get in touch with us and ask us if we could please come to there while we're in that country. How hard is it, though, the work? I mean, you, you arrive somewhere and, they, and, and, and do you get to say what you will do or do they get to say what you will do? Well, already on your profile, you've kind of said what you're going to do. Um, and, and we have a fairly positive look and we don't mind working uh, for instance, we've had two now one on the island of Corfu uh, which we actually felt we were taking advantage of them because we were lucky if two or three hours work a day and they just wanted to show us their island speak to us in English tell us about their history and their culture and we we just were amazed at their generosity and their kindness and their they give you tips on how to travel to the next destination. Um, so that that was our first ever experience as a workawayer. And we thought, all right, well, that's the ballpark. That's um, the standard, I guess. And it's either going to be better than this or worse. Uh, so the next one was a workaway in the oh, south, just 20 minutes south and east of Rovnik. We actually stayed on for an extra half a week because we just had so much fun with this family. Two two young boys, 18 and 20, a small plot with herbs, a big veggie patch. So we're doing the gardening. I helped maintain a pool. My husband built a platform and some steps to get in and out of the above ground, general plumbing maintenance um, because it's his husband works away for months at a time and it's too big a place for her to look after herself so you know and and she was in on all these amazing things happening in the area tells us about the history and what's going on places to visit uh yeah she was the lady that actually sent us up to mostar and said you know don't leave this area without going into bosnia herzegovina we we will travel back and look more thoroughly further east um, and north as as where you are because we were blown away by the the culture the friendliness the openness the willingness to help travelers out they're just beautiful people and 
coming from Australia, we just don't have this kind of culture. It's a bit like slow tourism in a way. What you're you're describing instead of rush uh, instead of rushing from one place to another to see this, to see this, to see this, to see this. You can take it so slowly and almost become a local. You you just eat local food and and just do things like local people do. It must be fantastic. Oh look, I think I got it. I chose to go to Vietnam. English as a second language three years ago and left my husband back in Australia but I did travel back two or three times through the year and he came to visit a couple of times but I actually lived with family and now they're like my Vietnamese family and that's why we returned for a wedding a best friend and we would just work a week and then jump on a scooter and travel out around the countryside all weekend and then come back ready to start work again Monday. And I thought, this is such a good way to live because you're actually experiencing what life is really like in these countries. What is What has been the highlight for you, Elizabeth, from your, your time so far in, 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 in Croatia? Croatia is slightly different from Bosnia-Herzegovina. It's got a beautiful coast. You know, the weather is, 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 is really cool. But I think the people are similar in so many respects so if you could choose one thing so far what would you say has been the thing that's made left the, the, the greatest impression on you oh the, the history the, the history I think is what I just love I my jaw drops every time I walk down the street you know we we have traveled through Italy and France a little years ago um slowly you know in a car and to mess around but here still live in these villages and and walled towns that's what i think we're loving we stopped and chatted to an old man in Courtula island who had lived in his house for 80 years yeah that that's just one of those special moments you would never experience if you were a tourist traveling from hotel to hotel you know flying on a plane and jetting out the next next destination you're not going to stay in europe forever you will have to go back to australia i assume how, how do you think you're going to cope with the I, I mean this in the most politest and sincerest of ways how are you going to cope with the culture shock of going back down under oh look that's a funny serious question um i i had this problem when i came back from vietnam because what drove me out of vietnam was the noise and the hustle and bustle and i got back home and within a week, I was missing it and going, oh, it's so quiet. And, um, but we have a large family at home. And I think we'll just be sitting down ready planning our next trip, which next year we tend to, we're intending to spend four or five months on the road, transversing from Perth through to Queensland, through the centre of Australia. That sounds amazing. I mean... For me, like you're saying about the quaintness of Croatia, the quaintness of Bosnia Herzegovina, for for a northern hemisphere person, I would just love the experience of standing at the side of the road and watching what do you call them? Road trains? These trucks that have twenty or thirty things behind it's it's so unusual how our, our perspectives are so different. Oh, it is. And I think that's why we love to travel. So we try to travel um once every two to three years and then the next year we travel within Australia because it's such a big country and we love to have travelled overseas because we can then appreciate what we've got as to what is available out there and we, we have lived up in the north of um, Western Australia for many years and road trains are just an everyday occurrence and we curse them most of the time. I, I've actually driven hall packs in mines um, my husband is a blast technician so he's blown up the ground and yeah I could sit and chat all day about the experiences we've had and are you planning to come back to the Balkans again or or is this you've done this and there's somewhere else to see in the world for the next trip outside Oz oh look that we want to go everywhere but we will come back to the Balkans because we've just tipped the tip of the iceberg this trip well listen when you come when you come back next time please keep in touch it's so nice that you're following the facebook page um but do next time you come back please 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 do get in touch we'll try and give you the the slow tourism tour to die for oh okay okay that's cool. well i will we'll stay in touch via facebook and um yes we hope we get back here in not too many years time hey and you take care with your 
work away. The idea is to enjoy it, not to work, if you know what I mean. Look, we, we've got a really good balance, as we were telling our friends. We have three weeks and then we have a week off, and that's what we're doing here in Buditsa. So we've hired bikes for a week and um, yesterday we went south for 30 kilometres. Uh, the day before we went north for 30 kilometres and just the little villages, take pictures, sit and have coffee with the locals. Uh, yeah, it's just the best way to holiday. Elizabeth, thank you so much for giving me your precious time today. Do enjoy the rest of your time on holiday. And maybe if we keep our fingers crossed, we'll catch up in the near future. Be lovely. Thanks for your time, David. I've enjoyed it. Elizabeth O'Neill there talking to me about working away. To find out more about working away, check out the links in the show notes. And once again, apologies for that buffery internet connection. That's it for this edition. If you would like to support the podcast, then there's a link both in the show notes and on our blog at an Englishman in the Balkans. That's all one word dot com. Supporting us really does help, as would a review if you're catching this on iTunes. Thanks again for listening, and until the next episode of the podcast, do stay safe wherever you are in the world. To find out more about us and where we live, why not check out our blog at anenglishmaninthebalkans.com. See you next time.